Neon Cyberpunks and Retro Nerds, welcome back to another edition of Neon Trash. I'm your boy, Tommy the Hammer. Tonight we're cracking open the old VHS vault for another slasher movie. This one is called Curfew. And you know what, guys? I gotta be blunt. I've never actually heard of this film. I was perusing our local exchange and happened to see a copy of it on VHS for a rather affordable price. And I thought I'd give it a whirl. From what I know about this movie, it's a late 1980s, uh, vaguely mystery slasher film. It didn't get too many good reviews, but I'll be the judge of that. So you guys know this routine. Check out the trailer, peep that shit for educational and historical purposes. turning their perfect world into an all-too-real nightmare. Okay guys, I just got done watching the crap fest that is Curfew. Uh, straight away, in good consciousness, this is one of those slasher movies from the late 1980s that I can't really recommend. There's a lot wrong with Curfew, and uh, we're going to be touching on some of those things. So for starters, pretty much everything in Curfew is terrible. The acting is abysmal. Most of the uh, characters in this movie kind of sleepwalk through their roles, and whereas they're not inherently bad, they're just not exceeding any type of expectations you might have for a movie called Curfew. And if you look at the cover of this movie, um, you're kind of given the impression that it's actually going to be maybe a hidden gem of some sort, but it's not. Growing up in the 1980s and enjoying movies from that era, I can't see anybody, especially younger audiences, getting into a film of this magnitude. The way it's filmed is kind of cool. There's like this weird, dark, late 1989 vibe to the whole film. But outside of that, it really kind of comes across as being stagnantly flat. But the one thing, the one thing this movie does have going for it is it caused somewhat of a controversy back in the day. Curfew was banned and it's you know released in heavily edited form uh, on a multitude of media and I gotta say I, I probably have got one of the edited versions here on the back of this VHS it says it's rated R and some of the death sequences are actually pretty decent but for the most part I felt like there was something missing from a lot of this bloodshed so I can only imagine what the producers cut just to make this movie get a theatrical release or whatever the fuck it actually got released as. So it also does something that few films from this era were actually attempting to do and that is spending some time and some nuance on torturing the victims. In 1989 and the late 1980s the MPAA was really, you know, putting its foot down on slasher films. They thought they were corrupting the youth back in the day. So when you watch things like Sleepaway Camp Part 3, it's horrifically edited to the point of where the movie is not enjoyable whatsoever. Almost every single death sequence from that film 
has been cut in some way. So it's not surprising that you know producers and the MPAA were looking at movies like Curfew and they were like, you guys need to trim that motherfucking bastard, otherwise you're never gonna get a theatrical release. Which is kind of disappointing because when you go into a slasher movie, you wanna see the slashing. You wanna see the exploitation. You wanna see this kind of midnight movie mentality. You're not coming to a slasher movie because you're like, I want nuance, I want reserved elements. No, you wanna see decapitations, you wanna see mayhem, you wanna see the characters killed in ridiculous ways. That's why you watch a slasher movie. That's why Friday the 13th and Jason Voorhees was so successful until even the MPAA back in the day was cutting those films. That being said, guys, I don't want to take too deep of a dive with the movie Curfew. It really doesn't deserve any longer conversations. So out of 10 stars, I think I could award it maybe a solid 4 out of 10.